We're going to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and then we're going to look at the first couple of verses. The Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils in 1, uh, 2nd, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, excuse me. And the Bible says that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices as 2 Corinthians chapter 2. So it's important to understand that in the last days, what Satan's trying to do with our world, and we are not to be ignorant of what Satan's doing. So you see that it's so crazy, current events, on what's going on. And the Bible predicted all these things on what's going to occur, how chaotic and how bad the world is going to be become. Now look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, so when people say, notice, peace and safety, what does the Bible say? Then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman, woman with child, and they shall not escape. The Bible warns that when, there, when people proclaim peace, there will be destruction. As a matter of fact, what you're going to find out is that there's a certain sign and a symbol that people use today, and the Bible proclaims that to be death. Now, I told you before, a lot of people do this sign and symbol when they take a picture, and actually it's not peace, it's death. So you can guess, it's this. How many of us have taken a picture like this? Especially in today's day and age, a lot of young people are doing this. Now, you might be surprised and you might go, what? You're crazy, actually. How can that represent death? Well, the Bible is going to show you, actually, that this finger, these two fingers, how it's uh, mostly used throughout history, you got to understand that throughout history, these two fingers are used quite often for destruction, for death. It's not actually peace. So we're going to look at one example right here. Let's look at Nimrod, the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis, chapter 10. Genesis chapter 10. What do you mean Nimrod? He uses those two fingers and the Bible says that Nimrod, there is only one verse about Nimrod or one passage that talks about Nimrod in Genesis chapter 10. And Nimrod, he is known, all we know about him in the Bible is that he is a hunter. The Bible says that he is a hunter. If you study ancient history about Nimrod, he is infamously known for creating most of the modern religions today and a lot of pagan idolatry today. In fact, when you, when you have the image of the Virgin Mary, and if you study history, secular historians will admit this too. The, work, uh, the adoration of the Virgin Mary comes from paganism. There's no doubt. It comes from pagan religion where Roman goddess Venus, as well as the god of the Ephesians, Diana, a lot of female deities. If you doubt it, doubt me, then all you have to do is look at a lot of Indian idols, Asian idols, a lot of ancient idols, and you'll see an image of a mother with a child. That child is Tammuz, and the mother is Semiramis, Semiramis. Now, Semiramis, she actually married Nimrod. So, Nimrod and Semiramis are the primary origins of all of paganism today. The Bible called him a hunter. Why is that? Because he really is a spiritual, a mighty spiritual hunter. And hunter, as you might notice throughout the Bible, hunting is not a positive connotation. It's mostly negative throughout the Bible, hunting for the souls of men, hunting to destroy a person. For example, Esau was a hunter, but the Lord, he did not bless him. He actually blessed Jacob after that. If you look at throughout the, uh, throughout the book of Psalms and the major prophets, it talks about the enemies of the Lord hunting after the Jews. And they are uh, represented as a negative connotation. But look at Genesis chapter 10, verse 8, And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. Ancient history records him 
as a successful ruler and king. He is most likely the one who started the Tower of Babel. It's no wonder the Lord ruined it, the Tower of Babel, because he could have been that one world ruler, that Antichrist. But the Lord knows that it's not time. Verse 9, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter, notice before the Lord. So you'll notice right here, this is not just a physical hunting. It's something spiritual before the Lord. The Lord was seeing something else he was hunting spiritually. And in fact, what would make sense is that he was a hunter of souls because he was the origin for all of the pagan religions today. So what do, what do hunters do when they hunt for animals during those times? They use these three fingers, right? And the, primarily these two and these fingers, and then they hold an arrow and a bow. And that's how they kill their and hunt their prey. But there is one primarily primary religion also that does those fingers. And you can guess, if he was the one, uh, if this is where Catholicism came from, it would be no surprise you would see the Pope and a lot of Catholics and priests occasionally using this as a symbol of what? Peace. But the Bible foretold you that when people proclaim peace, that it's destruction. Now we're going to look at Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. The Bible forewarned you about this. Look at Revelation chapter 6. That's why you've got to avoid the Pope. You've got to avoid the Catholic Church. Why? Because the Bible says that in the end times, the Pope and this particular religion, the Catholic Church, they will be the ones who will dominate the world and they will be the ones who will bring in destruction. Here comes the Antichrist or Pope. Now a lot of people have different theories that the Antichrist, that he's not actually the white Pope, such as Pope Francis today, but more as a black Pope, the Jesuit general. But Pope Francis, he came from Jesuits, so I wouldn't doubt. Uh, what I particularly lean towards is that I really believe that if the Antichrist is going to come out, that he's somehow going to be a white pope and a black pope somehow combined. If we had it successful with Pope Francis, if you give it enough time in the future, that wouldn't be a surprise. The reason why is that if you study the Jesuit oath, the Jesuit oath, they particularly say their job is to make the whole world bow to the white pope and to give him the glory. And then if you study a lot of the sources concerning the Jesuit general, aka the Black Pope, you'll find out that he is a very powerful figure controlling of a lot of things, a lot of things. If people out there are conspiracy buffs, what you're going to find out is a lot of the Illuminati elites, Masons, Rothschilds, and Jewish elites, a lot of it was instigated and run by the Pope's control. Now, I'm not saying that the, uh, the Jesuit general, he's cleanly controlling everybody. In my opinion, when you study all of this, I think a lot of it can be independent by themselves, or it can also be uh, joining together with the Pope. So it's very complicated. So I don't get into specifics, because then you'll go to La La Land, and you'll say some crazy stuff, which you find on YouTube and Google. And I'm not that type of person. If I'm going to give... Uh, explanation or belief. I'm going to do it by credible sources. So anyways, basically, the Pope is going to be the Antichrist. Let's look at Revelation chapter 6 and verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw and behold a, what color is this horse? A white horse. The Pope, he's dressed in white, yes. Let's keep reading. And he that sat on it, had on, uh, excuse me, and he, he that sat on him had a what? Bow. He had a bow. If you look at the Pope's staff, the Pope's staff is like a bow. Let's keep reading. And a what? Crown was given unto him. The Pope is wearing a crown. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. 
If you study the history, especially of the Catholic Church and Jesuits, they conquer, they're conquering, and they're still conquering. So they're trying to control everything in the world. So you'll see right here a bow shape, and also he is dressed in white, but also the Bible describes him as an idle shepherd. The Pope, he is known to be as the shepherd of the church. In the book of Zechariah, they call him a shepherd. Not only that, what's also interesting is that if you read uh, the Latin inscriptions, the Roman numerals of the Pope on what he sits and what he wears, you're going to find out that the, it's going to be like Roman numerals and it totals out to 666. And if you don't believe me, then just look at it if you don't believe me. So you can see right here that the Pope is the perfect representative of the Antichrist. But notice that he has a bow. So to have a bow, again, you see that? These fingers again. Bow, hunting for the souls of men. The Pope always does this. So when people tell you peace, don't believe it. The Bible says sudden destruction cometh upon them. Not only that, during World War II, one of the bloodiest battles in history, Winston Churchill, that was his famous sign, wasn't it? During a bloody World War II, and that's supposed to be V for victory. But how do you attain that victory? It's through bloodshed, it's through fighting, in order to attain your peace that the world wants to have at the end. Also, Winston Churchill, he's part of that uh, group, and this group, which is still alive today, the United Nations. It all came back from what? Winston Churchill, Roosevelt, a lot of other people get together, and then they laid the foundations, and by laying foundations, as time passed by, we come to the United Nations again. What's the job of the United Nations? To bring peace to our world. But that order was proclaimed by the Bible that all nations will soon become one world government, one world order. And as President Bush and previous presidents have proclaimed, we're proclaiming a new world order. The Bible says, watch out, that when peace happens, when they proclaim peace, it's actually destruction. Not only that, what do people do when they smoke cigarettes? They always use these fingers. And they do that to, when you get stressed and pressure, people try to do smoking to get their peace to attain their stress reliever, their peace. But that actually kills you. It's destruction. Crazy when you look at current events, people are doing right now and throughout history, what these two fingers always represented. These two fingers, what they're occasionally used, you'll notice, is not peace. These two fingers occasionally are used for death. So when you take a picture, I'd avoid this if I were you. I never do this when I take a picture. Now, I don't make a big deal. If there are some people in our church who take a picture like that, I'm not going to slap them in the face and say, you're representing death and stuff like that. I'm not hypercritical. But I am trying to tell you, church, now that you know about this topic, that you should be more careful when you do this now. You should be more careful when you do this. When they proclaim peace, the Bible says sudden destruction. Look at Matthew 24, Matthew chapter 24. Peace, peace, peace. But the Bible says, no, it's destruction. It's destruction. Now we're going to look at Matthew chapter 24. Notice what Jesus, Jesus proclaimed about the end times. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 24. And we're going to look at verse 6 or 4. Verse 4, Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So you'll notice right here that in the end times, the Bible proclaimed that it's not going to be peace, but that it will be war. And there will be much deception around our world, where there are people proclaiming that they are the Christ. 
And there are the, going to be these people who are going to proclaim themselves to be the Christ, the Christ that will finally bring in the kingdom, the Christ that will finally bring in peace on earth. And if you look at some of the documentation of the Catholics, what they proclaimed about the Pope, there are documents that says the Pope is Christ on earth. And if you don't believe me, all you have to do is research it and find out. So you'll notice right here, why will the Pope proclaim that? To bring peace on the earth. So the Bible forewarns you about all of this.